Hey everyone, I hope that you had a great weekend. Yesterday was Memorial Day and I hope that we all took some time to remember and to be thankful for all of those who have sacrificed and given their lives to protect and defend the freedom that we experience and enjoy as citizens of the United States of America. I want to say thanks to all of you who have served or are serving our country in one of the branches of our military. This past Sunday was our first in-person service uh, people in the sanctuary coming together to worship for the first time in 11 weeks. It was so great to gather together to see so many of you and uh, just to worship corporately together. If you're planning to come this Sunday, uh, sign up on our website, newhope.church. Uh, follow the, the link for in-person services. You can sign up for 8 a.m., 10 a.m., or 12 o'clock noon. We look forward to seeing you. Today, I want to talk about patience one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit listed in Galatians 5.22. Our life is full of situations that test our patience. In this past Sunday's sermon, Pastor Luke uh, mentioned about long traffic lights or uh, grocery store checkout lines or maybe uh, being put on hold on a phone call for far too long. They test our patience. Life itself tests our patience. I'd say through the t past 10 weeks of coronavirus quarantine, you you may have found yourself getting upset or frustrated, angry, or even impatient at the variety of differing reports that you find or hear on the news, just wishing that all of this could come to an end, maybe even wishing and praying that the Lord would just return and put an end to all of this. Wouldn't that be amazing? We know that God knows best, and he does best, but sometimes we wonder, what is God waiting for? The Bible tells us that he is patiently waiting for all to come to Christ and to be saved. One thing that God is, he's patient, but we are not. His patience tells us something about life, that there's more to life than this life. That God will set all things straight. He will correct all errors. He will one day make everything right. We may suffer for a season, but there is a greater, better, and longer season coming. Look at this passage of scripture from the book of James, chapter 5, verses 7 to 11. This is what it says. Dear brothers and sisters, be patient as you wait for the Lord's return. Consider the farmers who patiently wait for the rains of the fall and in the spring. They eagerly look for the valuable harvest to ripen. You too must be patient. Take courage, for the coming of the Lord is near. Don't grumble about each other, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. For look, the judge is standing at the door. For examples of patience and suffering, dear brothers and sisters, look at the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. We give great honor to those who endure suffering. For instance, you know about Job, a man of great endurance. You can see how the Lord was kind to him at the end. For the Lord is full of tenderness and mercy. First thing he says is consider the farmer. See how the farmer waits. A study was done years ago on crop production. For a hundred bushels of corn from one acre of land requires so many pounds of water, oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, potassium, sulfur, and other elements too numerous to list. In addition to all of these are required rain and sunshine at just the right times. And although many hours of the farmer's labor are also needed, it was estimated that only 5% of the produce of a farm can be attributed to the efforts of man. It's all a matter of waiting. A farmer learns and a farmer knows that he has to wait patiently. And we too must wait patiently on the Lord. Our life is in his hands and it's all in his plan and timing. Things are out of our control. The second thing he says is don't grumble. In, in verse 9 he says don't grumble about each other. There are many things that happen in life that may cause us to grumble, to, to gripe or complain. But grumbling about the world or about our negative situation isn't the answer. And grumbling to one another or against one another sure doesn't accomplish anything. Paul says in, a, in Philippians chapter 2, verse 14 to 16, he says, Do everything without complaining or arguing, so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. Grumbling and complaining doesn't solve our problems or the problems of the world. We need to let the Lord take care of things. Our faith is in him, not in ourselves. 
And the third thing he says here is remember Job. It's difficult to find a greater example of suffering than Job or a greater example of patience. Job lost all of his wealth. And worse yet, he lost all of his children. You see, in Job chapter 1, he gets word that all 10 of his children perished when their home collapsed. In chapter 1, verse 20, it says, Job stood up after hearing this news. He tore his robe in grief, and he shaved his head and fell to the ground to worship. He said, I came naked from my mother's womb, and I will be naked when I leave. The Lord gave me what I had, and the Lord has taken it away. Praise the name of the Lord. In all of this, Job did not sin by blaming God. It's absolutely amazing. It's incredible faith that Job had. Not many of us would have been praising God at the news of the passing of our children. But apparently, Job completely trusted God. How else could he have praised God in this moment? Job questioned God's will, but Job didn't forsake his faith in the Lord. In Job 13, 15, he says, Though he slay me, speaking of God, yet I will hope in him. I will surely defend my ways to his face. Job was so sure of God's perfections that he persisted in arguing with him, even though he did not understand all that God was doing. That is endurance. That's patience. And when we consider how Job endured such terrible suffering, how can we not endure? How can we not be patient? How can we not keep on living a life of faith like Job did? James tells us to remember the farmer, to not grumble, and also to remember Job. Trust the Lord to do what is right. Trust that he is always at work. And Paul said this, Paul said, and we know. What do we know? Well, what we know is that we have more revelation than Job had. Romans 8, 28 says, we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose. Listen, we can trust God. And as we look to God and know that he is at work, let him build patience in us. Let's trust him. That no matter what our circumstances, no matter what our situation, that he's at work, that he will come through. He is a faithful God who loves us, cares for us, has all of our needs met according to his riches in glory. God bless you. Have a great day.